Hello, everybody. Uh, I just want to take a couple minutes to go over this uh, problem set, determining Young's modulus. Uh, some people seem to be having uh, the same kind of questions, particularly with the Excel portion of this. Uh, so I'm going to start off. I'm just going to copy and paste this data table into Excel. So here we are. We have the data table in Excel. And now I'm just going to go through and start calculating values. I'm going to try to use Excel's uh, calculating abilities uh, to alleviate some of the, the manual calculation you might normally have to do. So, for starters, we need to calculate the change in length of the part. So we're going to take the final length and subtract from it the initial length. So I'm going to utilize Excel here. I'm going to say equals, and the equation starts with an equal sign. And I want to call on the value in cell B3. So B3. Notice a blue box appeared, and the B3 is in blue. And I want to subtract from that the value in cell A, oops, A3. So now notice that A3 is green, and there's a green box around cell A3. This should subtract B3 minus A3. Just looking at it, I'm expecting a value of 0.002. So let's press Enter and confirm that that happens. Hey, that's what we get. So now I would like to copy and paste this equation all the way down the row, so that way, it, uh, all the way down the column, so that way it's able, Excel is able to run this calculation for me. Uh, there's a nice little shortcut I can use. Uh, if you click on a random cell, you'll notice there's this little black box down in the lower right-hand corner of the cell. If you click on that box or move the mouse over that box, uh, you'll notice the cursor changes uh, to a tighter plus sign. If you click and drag, uh, you can copy and paste the contents of that box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on cell C3, bring my mouse to the lower right-hand corner until the cursor changes, and I'll grab that little box and I will drag all the way down and what I've done is I've copied and pasted that equation all the way down the column. Now if you check the value in the, the lower uh, cell C6 you'll notice that Excel was smart enough to recognize that as I was copying and pasting the equation down that I wanted it to call on the values from the next uh, next row and so it's automatically changed the row numbers so that's a nice feature there. So. I've got my change in length values calculated now. I'm going to go over to my strain values, which should be change in length divided by original length. So change in length, the values in column C, divided by the initial length, the values in column A. So let's come over here to cell D3. We'll start off with an equal sign. Uh, and we'll call on C3, the first change in length, and we'll divide it by cell A3, the first initial length. And we'll press Enter. Hey, it's done the division for us. We can click on that cell, find the little box in the lower right-hand corner, click and drag down, and we've automatically, once again, uh, it has automatically updated the row numbers, so that way it has done that calculation all the way down. Nice and simple for me. Now I'll come over to area, area in meters squared. Now, uh, just a reminder, the area we want, we've got a unknown material and we know that the radius of the material is four centimeters so let's go ahead and assume a circular cross-section uh, so the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared so I'm going to put in equals and for pi in Microsoft Excel I type pi and then I open parentheses and close parentheses I'm not entirely sure why the open and close parentheses but Excel needs me to open and close parentheses next to the letters pi for the value of pi and then we'll multiply that by the radius squared. Now the radius was four centimeters. Now if you think back, four centimeters converts out to 0 0.04 meters, because we want our area in meters squared, so 0 0.04 meters. Uh, and we'll square that. And there we have our area in meters squared. Now again, we'll copy and paste this formula all the way down. And notice it's the same all the way down. There's nothing changing in terms of column and row numbers, so we've got the same equation all the way down. Now we'll come over to column G, look at our stress values, where it's, it should be in newtons per meter squared. If you remember, stress is force per unit area squared, uh, sorry, force per unit area. So we'll come over to column G, cell 3, so G3. We'll press equals. We want to take our first force value from uh, cell E3. Uh, and divide that by our first area value, cell F3. And there we go. We'll take our stress values. So now we have some stress values. And again, notice cell E6 divided by F6. So we've got all our stress values. So now we've completed the table. That's the first part of the exercise. The second part of the exercise is to insert a graph. So I'll click on a blank empty cell. I'll come over here, insert. I want a scatter plot. 
come up with a blank scatter plot. Now I need some data from my blank scatter plot. So I'll come up to the, I can either click on the select data button up here in this ribbon bar, or I can right click on the graph and come down to select data. Now when I select my data, I'm going to add data to the graph. Uh, I would like on the horizontal axis, the x-axis, I would like that to be my strain values. And on the y-axis, I would like there to be my stress values. So this should give me a stress for strain plot. And we'll click OK and OK. And there we have a nice, it looks, looks linear, which is exactly what we want, a nice linear plot. Uh, if I click on this data set, one of these blue uh, stars here, or diamonds, rather, uh, and I come down to Add Trend Line. So I right-clicked on the data, on one of the data points, and I come down to Add Trend Line. Now it adds a trend line, gives me some options here. I would like a linear line, I'd like a line of best fit for this data. I'd like to display the equation on the chart, and I'd like to see an R-squared value, so I press Close. Now, the slope of this line, so it's giving me an equation in y equals mx plus b form, so the y-intercept is here, the slope of the line is here, 9e06, so 9 times 10 to the 6th, that's 9 times 10 to the 6th, the e stands for times 10 to the, so the slope of the line, which, if you remember, corresponds to Young's modulus, the slope of the line is 9 times 10 to the 6th, uh, so that's going to be important for the rest of the exercise. Now the R-squared value, this lets me know the uh, quality of the fit. R-squared values closer to 1 indicate that good fit, that the line is a good representation of the data. If the R-squared values are not close to 1, if they're much smaller than that, say 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, uh, that's a poor fit. That means the data doesn't, doesn't fit a line, a, li a linear uh, approximation very well. Uh, just bear that in mind. Now, to finish this off, I would need to come up here. I'll come up to my chart layout. I need my chart title, my axis titles. Don't forget your units. All those good things you know how to do. Uh, so yeah, that, that concludes all the things I wanted to go over for this. Oh, it lost my trend line. Ah, I never pressed OK, did I? So let's press close, and there we go. Now we've got our nice trend line there. All right.